And welcome to another Nothing Like a Good Book, where we go into fiction, non-fiction, and anything else in between. And I hope you enjoy. So far, I've had your letters and uh, comments on the on the authors we've had. It's been terrific, isn't it? And some of them doing exceptionally well, like TV series, movies, and all that jazz. Well, I've got another ripper today, very, uh, very interesting. Uh, let me bring it in. It's um, If I said to you, woke, you know, what does it mean to be woke? And why are so many who claim to be woke increasingly dissatisfied and consumed with America's failings as a nation? Yep, I'm going to be a little controversial today. So why are so many liberals convinced that the system needs to be burned down and rebuilt from the ground up? In his timely and revealing new book, American Gaslighting, How America is Being Systematically Taught to Hate Itself, author Daniel A. Scheite gives an in-depth analysis of human psychology and historical precedent demonstrating how Americans are being manipulated into hating their own country to serve the ends of the far political left. Now, when you do go to uh, the site later, there's going to be a trailer on it as well for you to have a look at, okay? That's a book trailer. Very good. Now, he minces no words about this manipulation, you know, stating that we need to blow the lid off woke uh, ideology and expose it for what it really is, Marxism in disguise. So the goal is to systematically deceive Americans into hating their own country. Is it working? Think about it. Its central tactic is pervasive gaslighting. It's a psychological ploy designed to make people doubt the reality That is right under their noses. Now, you say, Daniel, there wasn't one specific event that triggered you to write this book. Rather, it was a build-up over time as you observed the egregious assaults on the American identity and the blatant self-hatred that the left is determined to create. Welcome. Please explain, Daniel. Thank you for that lead-in, Mark. And I am very happy to be here. And, yes, you are correct that uh, there wasn't, like, a single aha moment that uh, that caused me to uh, put the book together. What I saw is a consistent degeneration over time of, you know, the, the, our traditional beliefs about, you know, America's uh, founding and our principles and uh, uh, the belief in our nation, that our nation is fundamentally good and founded on solid principles that uh, are meant to really uh, be eternal. And um, much of this has been long time in the making. It dates all the way back to Woodrow Wilson and the start of progressivism. And it has everything to do with the uh, subversion of the founders' uh, ideals, their intent, and uh, perpetuating a mindset, basically, that... uh, Simply put, that if they owned slaves, everything they did was invalid and a lie. Therefore, it can be burned down because they're discredited people. Mm-hmm. And that's just very narrow-minded thinking that doesn't stand up to the uh, test, you know, logical tests. Well, you're a uh, first-generation American, the son of immigrants, who saw America, you know, as the land of opportunity and who worked hard, really, to step into those opportunities. Why are you hoping to help Americans see how they've been deceived? Because, number one, it's a simple love of country, and um, I have such gratitude for the opportunities that this great land of ours offered to my parents uh, when they left war-torn Europe at the conclusion of World War II. And... It has left such an impression in my mind listening to their stories and my father's, uh, you know, constant praising of, you know, America, as you said, the land of opportunity where he came here with five dollars in his pocket and then was able to uh, not only complete a college education, but also start a small uh, taxi business in New York City Mm -hmm. where he supported his family of four. And, you know, he he just adored the country. And so I want to give everybody the same opportunities, you know, every, you know, specifically Americans and also 
legal immigrants that come here and want to participate in the American dream and help us to continue to build our nation. I want people to have those opportunities for all future generations. And that's not going to happen if we divert towards leftism the way we are, because that uh, culture is just going to be destroyed and fade away very quickly. Well, uh, John Kelly, um, he's your first five stars on this book, folks, uh, from the Detroit uh, Free Press. He says American gaslighting is an eye-opening and enlightening investigation into how uh, Daniel Scheide has discovered and believes the liberal left in America is actively using propaganda tactics to shame its fellow citizens and ruin the country. Well, this book sets uh, leftist gaslighting ablaze once and for all, I think. Is that how you see it, Daniel? I mean... Boy, there is a lot going on, and and I don't know if it's the America, it's certainly not the America of old anymore, is it? Yes, uh, and definitely, I, you know, uh, those are pretty vivid uh, adjectives, you know, but if anything deserves to uh, be torched and burned down, it would be Marxist philosophy. And that's really uh, what we what we have repackaged in the form of critical race theory and what is uh, influencing generations of students at all levels of the educational system, uh, which is being pushed down as low as, as the kindergarten and preschool now through various initiatives. Mm-hmm. But you know, effectively, it is, you know, it is a lens that through which everything is interpreted to be racist and divided into the oppressor and oppressed class, just the way Karl Marx divided things along economic lines of you know the bourgeois and the uh, and the uh, proletariats here we have you know uh, white people and people of color so automatically if you're in one group or the other if you're white you're automatically racist if you're in the uh, people of color category which is highly subjective by the way mm-hmm. uh, i don't know if they administer a melanin test or something to determine mm-hmm. okay if you have sufficient melanin you qualify as a person of color because it's that ridiculous but uh, that's the way they divide society. And um, they force people to constantly view each other in one very superficial characteristic as opposed to uh, their values, uh, you know, their ethics and so forth and all the elements of character that Martin Luther King spoke about in his speeches. Mm. Well, you're hoping that, uh, you know, this book is going to persuade objective readers that the American Constitution is still our greatest blessing. It's got to be preserved at all costs. Until recent times, you know, you've been able to rally around a common flag of sameness, the American identity. But you know what, uh, Daniel, this identity is, is what is enshrined supposedly in our founding documents, right? And to be American is to believe in God-given rights, uh, equal justice before the law, and the rule of law itself. And, and, you know, to be American means the rights of the individual reign supreme and the people give government its power but not the other way around. And systematically gaslit by politicians, establishment media, the entertainment industry, and the nation's education system for decades. These are the things you're pointing out in this book, right? Exactly, yes. And our American Constitution was designed to constrain government, not to constrain the people. And um, we saw no greater violation of this principle than during the, the COVID pandemic uh, you know, um, response and panic, uh, where government uh, executive branch, particularly at multiple levels, uh, both the uh, federal and state and local uh, entities, began usurping power that is typically reserved to the legislature, where they began passing all kinds of mandates uh, that uh, would give them extraordinary powers and have implications well into the future beyond a simple, you know, uh, emergency. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's what they do. You know, they, they use a crisis to then basically reshape the system. Mm-hmm. It is a consistent pattern uh, that I see. And, um, and the left loves to create fearful and desperate people because when humans are subjected to fear and desperation, they begin to clamor for any solution because the survival instinct uh, kicks in. And, um, and so they will re- readily accept surrendering freedoms in exchange for a perceived sense of safety, which the government can never guarantee anyway. 
So it is a myth. All right, give me some current examples of gaslighting, okay, and how it is happening in our current social and political arenas. How do you see that? Well, the most uh, prominent and easy to uh, discuss is uh, DHS Secretary Mayorkas' testimony before Congress saying the border is secure when we see video plainly of people streaming across the border by the thousands. Mm-hmm. And yet he's telling us it's, it's secure. Then uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, or maybe even less than that, we had Joe Biden while munching on an ice cream cone told us that the economy is strong and, and healthy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, my, uh, my grocery bills don't tell me that, <laughs> You're right. you know, and, mm-hmm. and so many Americans who are, who are suffering and it's always, the classes of people that the Democrat party and the left claim to protect Mm -hmm. that are going to be impacted first and worst when, uh, you know, the government fails them and and gaslights us with things like, like the economy. So they are constantly doing things like that. And, and, uh, gaslighting is, uh, you know, it's designed specifically to make you doubt reality, right. And to uh, directly contradict well, the, the reality is there, but I mean, I live in Tucson, Arizona. You don't have to tell me about the border, you know what I mean? But it doesn't yeah. matter. Let them all in. You know, there's plenty of guns. Uh, there's plenty of other stuff here. Uh, come and take it and uh, bring all your baddies in. Look, it's a very controversial issue. It's very tough. The border whole thing is uh, is uh, wrong. It's broken. It's got. It's, there's so many things that need to be done. Uh, whoever's in power is genuine enough to get it done. But then again, you've got the, you know, bleeding out liberals, as they say, oh, well, you know, these people are trying to escape terror, this, that. They are indeed, a lot of them are, but there's a lot that aren't. And the, mm-hmm. uh, there has to be ways to be able to get it all out. Let me ask you this, Daniel, what, what uh, spurred your interest, you know, in this subject and motivated you to write a book examining and countering uh, Marxism uh, and what you call woke ideology. So it was, again, very, very uh, simple, you know, point of departure. My, you know, when I grew up and I was in school, it, I, you know, I'm a, what they call a Cold War generation. Mm-hmm. Right? And I was, we were taught, and, and at that time, uh, Republicans, Democrats, the right, the left, conservatives, liberals, everybody was pretty much united in that communism was evil. Okay. And that we could always, we could always rally around. We may have differed over a lot of social questions and social issues. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, uh, division, you know, with the Vietnam war. Uh, but generally nobody saw communism as a good thing, except for a very small radical minority. Mm -hmm. And, when I began to see that shift and become more mainstream, where now we have members of Congress clearly declaring themselves socialist, then I, uh, the alarm bells went off uh, in my head. And I said, wait a minute, you know, to, to declare yourself socialist puts you in direct um, opposition to the Constitution. Mm-hmm. Right? It, the principles just cannot be squared. So let me, that's let me a, ask you this. Let me ask you this. Everybody, you know, hammers of the Constitution. Is it out of date? No, absolutely not. Okay, but that is the progressive perspective. And Woodrow Wilson specifically said that, that it was an outdated document that, that was written for the Times. And he also uh, criticized, uh, you know, the Declaration of Independence, where he said that, you know, if you want to understand the the Declaration of Independence, just delete the preamble. Mm. And, uh, and then, you know, if you do that, then it's just a list of peeves that the colonists had against, um, you know, the British government and the monarchy mm-hmm. at the time, of King George. So, you know, that reduces the document, you know, significantly in its importance when the preamble is what really codifies our entire identity as Americans in that uh, our rights are derived from God. They are not derived from any human source. And, um, and that was uh, key because at the time, too, if you recall, there was uh, an idea called the divine right of kings, 
where monarchs, you know, they claimed that they had a mandate from God. And that was just not true. Well, 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 well that goes back to medieval times even, doesn't it? You know. Absolutely, yeah. It predates you know, those times, but it was a descending, a descending kind of uh, something was passed down you know, from generation to generation, and, and King George certainly still abided by that, uh, by that concept. So our, our Declaration of Independence and that preamble turned everything upside down across the globe. Uh, and, and monarchies began to fall after that. So mm-hmm. it's a extraordinarily important uh, couple of paragraphs that uh, we can never abandon. Right. Um, well, I mean, you do quote, Daniel, that uh, in American gaslighting, uh, that you've tried to provide a balanced treatment of American history. I mean, you wanted to examine political ideology in a combined context of human nature, logical thought, and historical perspective while hoping your book will fill critical knowledge gaps related to history and politics for the average American. And, uh, you know, we must build our thinking abilities and become clear-eyed sceptics who don't assume anything in politics is true unless properly tested and investigated through logically structured questions and answers. And you say together we must work at every level of government to elect freedom-loving leaders who believe in our constitution and uh, are not woke but awakened to what is truly happening. Heavy stuff. Uh, you get a lot of stars. Uh, Grady Hub, uh, the top 100 Amazon Hall of Fame reviewer, five stars. Um, let's have a look. There's plenty out there. There's a lot of people who... Uh, I see, you, you know, you've, you've lit a candle within them. David Allen Arnold, he's the uh, helicopter cameraman of The Deadliest Catch and he's the author of Help From Above. He says liberals in media, schools, giant corporations are hell-bent on running America into the ground. It's time to shine a light on the sinister forces that burned American cities, uh, cities in, the, in 2020 because they'll do it again if we don't stop them. The book will shine a light on their dark agenda. Where do you think this book's going to go, mate? Well, I hope, uh, if I could, I would put it in the hands of every single Democrat, (laughs) number one, uh, because they need to be awakened the most as to to, uh, what's really going on, because they've been uh, gaslighted to the max. Um, And um, I would love to ask every single Democrat why they vote Democrat and see what they understand, because they are operating under an absolute false premise, you know, because their party is the party that is advocating, you know, this leftist ideology. And uh, they claim that America is irredeemable because of its racist roots. So their words, right, because of Mm -hmm. slavery. And therefore, uh, it should be, you know, restructured and rebuilt. Well, I prove in the book the racist roots of the Democrat Party all the things that they that they did and they are responsible for the systemic racism of the past and they are the only ones who practice it today and uh if you doubt that uh just look at any of our inner cities where democrats rule with an iron fist and the schools are failing and the minority people living in crime infested neighborhoods that they refuse to now enforce the law and they have revolving door uh, you know, arrests where people just go back that same day without cash bail. So who are they serving? They, it is a completely, uh, it's, it's gaslighting to the max where they pretend that we are saving and helping you when every day they keep uh, our, our minority citizens in, um, in effective, a new form of slavery. Uh, it's, a, it's a plantation mentality that uh, highly mm-hmm. compares to what we used to have. Yeah, the old slavery, done to death. But here's the deal. I mean, people say to me, you know why I'm a Democrat? Why? Because uh, we get things done for people. We think of the people. We give things away. Yeah, millions of dollars, this, that. But I do agree with one thing, mate. Corporations getting away with absolute uh, no tax at all, uh, making billions. See, that's not right when you look at the other side of things. That money alone could really help a lot of people, you know, but... The other side of it is, well, let's just give everything we can. Next minute, you've got a recession. Now, 
Can American gaslighting and the trends you describe in this book be stopped? I, I believe they can. I think that though we're at an inflection point where uh, every day that goes by uh, and we don't push back effectively, uh, we inch closer to the point of no return. Uh, but I would offer a solution to to people is to number one, be, be vocal and refuse to self-censor. And self-censorship is um, a phenomenon, I guess, that is more prevalent now than ever because people fear cancellation. So when they see this woke ideology in schools or at work, uh, when they're subjected to ridiculous trainings that you know blatantly tell white employees that you know you must quote unquote seed power to uh, to minority people. Uh, you know, that's all uh, racism repackaged. Mm-hmm. And if you sit there in these trainings and you don't speak out and you don't object, uh, you know, then you become part of the problem. So stop self-censoring, vote with your wallet, uh, cancel subscriptions to corporations that, uh, you know, support these woke ideologies and uh, do your best to uh, to shop with, uh, at places and with companies that uh, don't support this stuff. So that's a simple action that everybody can take. So what do you think? Uh, so that's it. That, that, that's what average Americans can do to educate themselves and become, you know, more clear minded, critical thinkers. Uh, do you think these actions can help save the United States as you know it? Yeah, but it takes a movement. It really does take a movement. Now, uh, you know, we uh, parents, I believe, have awakened uh, greatly to this, uh, to what's going on in schools. So right there, we have a a significant um, level of energy that's been created where now parents are tuned in to to this, uh, these phenomenons. And uh, basically, they are starting to be much more involved in schools and curriculum and everything. And we just can't, can't let up. Mm. Because the whole idea is if you steal away an entire generation of children, then the future is lost. Eventually, these uh, children that have been indoctrinated with this garbage will basically become uh, tomorrow's leaders. And they won't have any understanding of what I just spoke about, of our Constitution and our founding. Well, that's right. Because when young Americans are indoctrinated to hate their own country, I mean, you ask, you know, what is the end goal? Who benefits from the implementation of these ideologies. So let me ask you this, Daniel Shady. What do you think... Well, can... um, Let me ask it this way. What do you foresee as the worst possible case scenario if these forces succeed and Marxism takes hold in America? So irresponsible power is what I see. Um, and I can, I, der- I derive that phrase from Frederick Douglass, who was a, a slave and who described uh, the power that the overseer and the, the owner of the slaves had. It was irresponsible power. They could do whatever they wanted to a poor slave. And totalitarian government becomes the same way. We don't. We only have to look at China and Venezuela mm. to see how much a citizen's rights matter in those countries, and that is the worst case scenario. Um, a slightly less worst case scenario, but still not at all desirable, is where you have something like we have in modern day Russia, where you have effective oligarchy. Uh, uh, elections are a fictitious exercise to provide a safety valve for the people to feel like they expressed their opinions and chose their leader when in reality everything is rigged Mm. and political opposition is suppressed and there are no real choices. Uh, So that, that is, you know, everyday life is life better today in Russia than it was under the Soviet union. Probably so probably people have a little bit more freedom, uh, but, uh, but still the, the core of the freedom to be able to choose your leaders and express yourself politically is just not tolerated. Mm. And, and you see what Putin did with uh, anti-war protests. Yeah. People went to jail by the thousands. 
and still are. I mean, the book is time. Your timing is uh, ironic. I mean, at this particular time, you know, when thoughts uh, about politics are polarized, really, uh, left versus right, blue versus red, uh, progressive versus conservative, or, you know, however the media is electing to phrase, uh, this particular... Uh, uh, reading from Grady Harp says, Shady steps onto the platform with vigour and fervour, expressing his concerns by presenting a history of the growing impact of propaganda. It's powerful and controversial. And your book, Daniel Shady, deserves a wide reading audience, no matter the political inclination. You had a lot of those. I didn't have time to put them all in, but I can say, folks... Uh, Daniel Scheite, you know, he believes America is the greatest country in the world. It's the greatest country he's ever known. And he wrote his book out of love for his country, the country that lifted his family out of poverty. And he's deeply concerned that you, me, we, Americans, yep, I may be from another country, but I live here, pay my taxes and do everything else. We're being systematically taught to hate our own country. So, the book is titled, well, it's a bold new book, isn't it? It exposes lies and gaslighting of American society. American gaslighting, how America is being systematically taught to hate itself. Think about that. Daniel, any closing thoughts? Well, I encourage everybody to to get engaged. Um, I encourage everybody to not return hate for hate, number one. And uh, I'll just close with a really quick story. I went to vote the other day Mm -hmm. uh, and I stepped over to the Democrat people and I told them that in the end, no matter who wins this election, we're all Americans. We don't hate you. We love you. We want to live in peace. And I don't care what Joe Biden says. Okay. We don't, we don't hate you. And we're not monsters just because we believe in the constitution. Well, there we go. Very interesting indeed. And um, there's a bio on Daniel and, of course, the trailer that I talked about of the book movie. That's worth watching. You just click on the link. It's right there on the site, uh, on my site of markbishopmedia.com. And, uh, of course, this goes out um, all over America and on all the various podcast channels on your favorite channel. You'd like to hear it again and again and dissect it. But get the book. Find out where can I get the book, Daniel? Uh, it's available on all the major outlets, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Apple Books, and also available at any of your local bookstores. It could easily be ordered through general distribution. All righty. Now, do you happen to have a direct uh, site at all uh, for purchase? Or yes, not? I do. Oh, you do? Uh, Good. You can go to americangaslighting.com, and all, all the links for ordering are there. You can also contact me personally if you'd like uh, through that website. And I am also available for speaking engagements that can be booked uh, through there as well. Fabulous. So, well, you know, you open yourself up there. You don't fear at all. You've got nothing to worry about. You don't fear if somebody wants to contact you and talk or uh, maybe have a coffee with you. I'm just saying that you open yourself up for people, which is great. If they go to your website and they read, but they want to comment or they don't agree with something or something upsets them. Absolutely. They can talk to you. You know, it's beautiful. I think that's great, you know. Yeah, they, they do need to. I, I want to create a dialogue, and that's that's what I'm really about. Is uh, we've got to talk to each other and stop uh, stop the division. Hmm. Well, there you have it, folks. Go to that. You know, in your podgies and a cup of coffee. Dub 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 dot American Gaslighting. One word. American Gaslighting dot com, and you'll see. You know where you can get the book and so on and other things. And you know, might even be able to chat, have a, have a bit of a talk, have a debate. He's a terrific fella, open, smart. And he'll, uh, he won't yell at you. He's a gentleman. Mate, it's been an absolute <laughs> pleasure having you on. Nothing like a good book, and I wish you all the best in the world with it. Thank you so much, Mark. It's been a pleasure to speak with you.